coming up. The UN says clean water can change lives of people as the world marks World Water Day. Cashew farmers call for effective policies to promote growth of the cashew industry. On the international front, at least 34 people killed in two twin bombings in Brussels. Hello and welcome to News R on GBC 24 and GTV. My name is Shelley Annan. I'm Gifty AJ and our signer is Robert Frimpon Manso. Good evening. World Water Day was celebrated on Tuesday to raise awareness on how clean water can change the lives of people and even transform entire societies and economies. According to the United Nations, almost half the world's working population work in water-related sectors and nearly all jobs depend on water. That explains the focus of this year's celebrations, water and jobs. In Ghana, the event was celebrated amid water shortages in part of the country, expect points to poor handling and short storage, coupled with illegal connections, as some of the challenges affecting improved access to water in Ghana. World Water Day dates back to the 1992 UN Conference on Environment and Development where international observance for water was recommended. The UN General Assembly therefore designated 22nd March each year as World Water Day. The global theme for this year is water and jobs. It is based on the premise that nearly all jobs, regardless of the sector, depend directly on water. It is estimated that 95% of jobs in the agriculture sector, 30% of jobs in the industry sector, and 10% of jobs in the services sector depend heavily on water. Yet, Ghana is currently battling with issues of illegal mining, climate change, as well as indiscriminate discharge of untreated urban domestic waste, a situation that is threatening most water bodies in the country. At this year's World Water Day at Manchabuna, stakeholders in the water sector called for collaborative efforts to improve access to water that is safe for human consumption. The managing director for the Ghana Water Company, Mr. Frederick Christian Loco, said Ghanaians need to value every drop of water because water is life. The Ghana Water Company today loses significant volumes of water produced on a daily basis to illegal activities by some consumers. And this affects negatively the capacity of the company to sustain the supply of this vital resource without which there is no life. The Minister for Water Resources, Works and Housing, Dr. Kweku Ajimai Mensah said the national theme, Improve Safe Water Access for Sustainable Livelihoods, is appropriate for Ghana's quest for improved access to water. The recent unfortunate water shortage in some parts of the country and the attendant stress was witnessed by all. The long spell of dryness across the country should be a wake up call to us and also remind us of the need to pay attention to issues that can cause such conditions in the future. Data from UN says, though Africa is endowed with about 63 spectacular international transboundaries covering over 64% of the continent's land, but Sub-Saharan Africa has the lowest daily household per capita use, lower than the UN consumption level of 50 liters per day. Away from that story, it's been about a month since Insawam in the eastern region was hit with water shortage. Though the attention was on potable water, there were some whose livelihood were affected because their source of income was from the Dinsu River. One such family that suffered loss of income from the water shortage is the Badachis. Gordon Badachi and his father are now back in business and can go fishing with their go on with their business activities that's fishing because the water level in the Dinsu has risen. A month ago, this was the state of the Dinsu River. Mm -hmm. 
This compelled many people in the area to travel over long distances in search of potable water. Thanks to the rains and the flow of the Kwa River, which is situated at Chichire and flows into the Dainsu, the river is now back to normal. The effects of the drying of this river was not only felt by those looking for potable water, but Mr. Gbadachi and his two children. For the past 10 years, the Gbadachis have been depending on the Dainsu River to make ends meet. No wonder as early as 10 in the morning, at the time the children ought to be in school, they were here fishing. Although they declined to talk to the news team, it is clear that when the river is dried up, their livelihood is affected. Now, they are back to business because the river is flowing. This is a clear evidence of what the United Nations is talking about, that there is a correlation between water and jobs. Godwin is an example of many children in Ghana whose parents depend on water bodies like the Dainsu to put food on the table for them. Although the fishes are small, there is a ready market for it every day at Nsawim. Godwin refused to disclose how much he earns from his catch, but it is possible for him to earn about 100 garden CDs per catch. On the other hand, those who do not have water in their homes and had to travel for miles to get portable water for their daily activities are now happy. This is because the Dainsu River is currently flowing at a depth of 9 feet, making way for the frequent supply of water to every home. Insawam was hit by an acute water shortage early this year due to the drying up of the Dainsu River. Illegal mining activities at Etiwa and chainsaw operations along the river banks, as well as sand winning activities at the source of the Kua River, were blamed for the severe water crisis in the area. The Ghana Water Company says, as the world marks World Water Day, it is incumbent upon all to ensure that water bodies are protected from activities that will undermine the health of these resources. To the company, the way out is to embark on a massive afforestation drive along riverbanks and also ensure that projects disturbing the peace of these aquatic bodies are stopped. And still on water, World Water Day reminds us about the importance of water. It is therefore worrying when water, which could be used for many purposes, go waste. One such example is at North Kanishi, where a burst pipe has been gushing for almost 10 months now. Residents claim the pipe was damaged during the floods of the June 3 disaster last year. Until date, the authorities have not taken an action to remedy the situation. All attempts by the residents to have the pipe repaired have failed. They have therefore called on the Ghana Water Company to, as a matter of urgency, repair the best pipe. And the global food sector, which uses 70% of the world's fresh water, faces extraordinary risk from the twin challenges of water scarcity and water pollution, rising competition combined with aging water infrastructure, weak regulation and climate change are creating a water availability emergency that experts have ranked as the world's top global risk. Climate change and overuse mean that in many places, the world is reaching the end of low-cost, plentiful water supplies. This shift increases the risk of financial impact to food companies, including disruption of operations, more expensive agricultural inputs, and constraints on growth due to water shortages and loss of social license to operate. In Africa, agriculture employs about 70% of the workforce, and the economy is agricultural-driven. Water shortage and climate change, therefore, have far-reaching consequences on livelihood. Five communities in the Suhum municipality of the eastern region have benefited from borehole project at the cost of 200,000 Ghana cities. The chief executive of Clean Aqua, an NGO, Mr. Sangu Delhi, was upbeat that boreholes will help prevent waterborne diseases such as diarrhea, cholera and bilhazia in the area. The communities are Ikropon Fom, Ahafi, Aplade, 
Adon Kwanta and Kojo Junction, all in the Suhum municipality. Some of the communities depend on streams, while others resort to scooping water from big holes. Besides, residents have to walk long distances to search for water. Clean Nakwa, an NGO with a vision of ensuring that communities, especially deprived ones, have access to potable water, contacted the Suhum Municipal Assembly and has gone to the aid of the communities. Committee members of the Suhum Municipality who run the boreholes were introduced to the communities. The Suhum Municipal Chief Executive, Mrs. Margaret Ansei, explained how the beneficiary communities were selected. We prioritize them. Then uh, according to the medium-term development plan, we look at our budget, then the population of the community. Also, we, we check whether the community is near to a potable cleaning water somewhere. If not, we consider that one too. Then the community itself, its commitment in getting their requests. The chief executive of Clean Nakwa, Mr. Daly, promised to continue to support government to provide social amenities to communities. There's one need that unites us, whether you, are in, whether you live in East Legon or you live in Plade, you all need water. It's the most basic fundamental unit. So we are saying that let us unite around the vision that says at the very most basic level, let us make sure that every single Ghanaian, regardless of whether you are a man, woman or child, regardless of where you are born into, regardless of your socioeconomic status, has access to clean water. Clean Aqua is working in two districts in the eastern region, namely Ayinswano district and the Suhu municipality in all 120 villages in the districts are expected to have access to clean and portable water in due course. Residents of Kewum in the Shai Osudoku district of the Greater Accra region have for the past 60 years been drinking polluted water. As the nation joins the rest of the world to mark World Water Day, Residents of Kewum and adjoining communities are calling on the government to improve the water supply in the area. According to the residents of Kewum, the Volta River, which serves as the only source of water for the community and other three communities, is contaminated due to human activities. Residents say some Chinese companies are constructing fish pond close to the stream with others engaging in sand winning activities. These companies, according to the residents, dump the waste material into the river, which makes it salty and sometimes yellowish to use. Although the community has been provided with four boreholes, only two is managed by the community. Residents say they are unable to use the water from the borehole because it is so highly contaminated with iron, which after a while turns reddish. They are therefore calling on the government as, well, as the world marks World Water Day to as a matter of urgency come to the aid of the residents with portable water to be sufficient to all by constructing pipelines to the main pipelines from Isuchari to the main township. That's joined us. You're watching News Hour coming to you from Broadcasting House here in Accra. Two other stories. The Millennium Excellence Foundation has honored former President John Ejikun Kufo for his statementship. Mr. Ejikun Kufo was among 15 personalities recognized by the foundation for their commitment to advance humanity at the Millennium Excellence Award held last year. Mr. Kufo used the occasion to advise African leaders not to fail their people but introduce policies that will improve their lives. Former President Kufour's participation at the Climate Change Summit in Paris did not make it possible for him to receive his prize during the Millennium Excellence Awards last year. The Millennium Excellence Foundation was at the residence of the former president to present the prize to him. A citation presented to him praised him for his promotion of peace and good governance not only in Ghana but in Africa. The president of the Millennium Excellence Foundation, Mr. Victor Beho, said even out of office, Mr. Jekum Kufour's contribution towards Africa's advancement is remarkable. Indeed, President Kufour is someone that we are all very proud of because he has kept aloft the flag of Ghana. If today our country 
has uh, earned a name for itself for being democratic, for being fair, and for doing something about what we know uh, are wrong with ourselves, it is due to the indefatigable manner in which His Excellency has tackled these problems out of office. Former President Kufo said the award will go a long way to spare him to work harder. He said Africa is still in need of leaders who will help lift its people out of the woods. I have come to believe that those of us who would be privileged to come into any leadership roles should feel a singular responsibility to treating Africans, our fellow Africans, with uh, that special kind of respect and humility. Because if, say, the whites came and reduced us into slaves, and friends from the East are streaming in also to exploit us, and we Africans get the opportunity to lead anywhere, and we abuse our people, treat our fellow Africans like they shouldn't count, then I say, then perhaps Africa has been damned by providence. And that, I don't believe that's the case. The Millennium Excellence Award is held every five years. Past recipients include Professor Kwabena Frimpon Boatin, Osaje Fu Amwiti Afuripenin, and Professor Kofi Awuno. Now, the management of the Ghana Gas Company has mapped out strategies to protect the gas infrastructure from any possible attack. At a meeting with security chiefs from the BNI, the Marine Police, the Navy and Fire Service, the chief executive of the gas company, Dr. Sepa Yankee, urged Ghanaians to especially those around Atuabo to report any unusual circumstances to the law enforcement agencies. The move follows recent terrorist attacks in the region. Cote d'Ivoire is the latest country in West Africa to have come under terrorist attack. The multi-million dollar gas plant at Etuabo in Ghana's western coast currently supplies the bulk of the nation's gas requirements. The safety of the plant, therefore, is of great importance to the country. It is against this background that operators of the gas plant held the discussion with heads of the security to find a pragmatic way of protecting the facility. Before a closed-door meeting, the chief executive of the Ghana National Gas Company, Dr. George Sepayanki, briefed the media on some aspects of the meeting. We'll examine plans and strategies to strengthen monitoring and surveillance of the gas infrastructure, including all the pipelines, uh, gas frozen plants. The meeting will also discuss plans to enhance coordination and sharing of security information and strategies among the various agencies within the eight project affected the streets of the gas projects. He also entreated staff of the company and members of the community to be security conscious. Security of the state is everyone's business. While Ghana Gas has put in place measures to help strengthen security of our various facilities at the GPP, the EDS and TRMS head office and the 111 kilometer onshore pipeline as well as the 58 offshore kilometer pipeline. Management will liaise with the various security services, uh, service, uh, service providers to strengthen the collaboration between us. The management of Ghana Gas will subsequently hold meetings with the Ghana Air Force to outline some additional measures on how to strengthen aerial surveillance of the gas infrastructure with the Z9 helicopters. The founder of the Nkoko Senior High School, Reverend Peter John Moss, has been honored by the school's old student association at a dinner in Accra. Reverend Peter John Moss, a British citizen who is currently an Anglican priest in the United Kingdom, worked with Reverend Victor Buenate in 1969 to lay the foundation for the development of Nkoko Secondary School. Reverend Peter John Moss arrived in Ghana at the age of 28 and worked hard to create opportunities for high school education for students from deprived families in 1969. Together with Reverend Victor Nate Tokudi, they laid the foundation for the development of Nkoko Secondary School. The national chairman of the Old Student Association of Nkoko Secondary School, Mr. Daniel owusu Kwarten, said the sacrifices of the late Reverend Victor Nate Tokoli and Reverend Peter John Moss in the development of Nkoko Secondary School has benefited many people 
who would otherwise have struggled to find secondary education. A citation from the Old Student Association described Reverend Peter John Moss as somebody who established a high reputation as an outstanding scholar and teacher of French, English and English literature in addition to his responsibility as the counsellor of the school. Reverend Peter John Moss is remembered for his significant contribution to the development of affordable quality education which has benefited thousands of poor students, especially in the Kwewu area who otherwise could not have had access to high school education because of financial constraints of their parents. The current headmaster of the school, Dr. Robert Forsen, outlined the needs of the school and requested the Old Student Association of Nkoko Secondary School to support some of the development projects of the school. Reverend Peter John Moss paid tribute to the late Reverend Victor Nate Tokoli for creating an opportunity for them to work together to lay a foundation for Nkoko Secondary School, which has produced many great citizens of Ghana. To have helped them to succeed and to hear of their achievements are very great privileges and not all teachers are allowed to see the effects of what they tried to do. The school started with six teachers and 70 students in 1969, and they had to work hard to maintain higher academic performance. Those were the local stories coming up is business. Hello again, we do business brought to you by SIC Airtel and Ernest Chemist. My name is Maurice Ubete. Now, the African Cashew Alliance, an international business organization that promotes global competitiveness of the African cashew industry, is advocating effective policies to promote the growth of the cashew industry, especially processed cashew. In Accra on Tuesday, the acting president of the alliance said, without government support and policies, the objective of adding value to raw cashew through processing cannot be achieved. It said the alliance supports the decision by government to suspend the export of raw cashew in the country. The Trade and Industry Ministry recently imposed a ban on the exports of raw cashew nuts in the country. According to the ministry, local cashew processing companies have collapsed because they do not get enough raw nuts to process and they blamed it on the export of raw cashew to other countries. So, the ban was aimed at revamping these companies and to reduce the job losses that has hit these companies. Out of the 14 cash processing companies in the country, 12 are out of business, a trend the trade ministry believe the way out is to put a ban on the export of raw cashew. However, the move did not go down well with the cashew farmers and exporters, prompting parliament to call for the withdrawal of the ban. The cashew industry generated $170 million in the form of foreign exchange earnings for the economy in 2013. Ghana exports an average of 150,000 metric tons of unprocessed cashew nuts annually, widening the gap between demand and supply for local processors in the country. This development, according to the players in the cashew industry, coupled with high prices for raw cashew, have collapsed or the processing companies in the country. Speaking on the issue, the CEO of the African Cashew Alliance, ACA, Dr. Oyewole Babafemi said Ghana has a potential to become a big player in the global cashew market, but there is the need for policies that will ensure that each of the players in the chain, that is, from the farm gates to the factories, are not shortchanged. The policy is very good, but the timing is what uh, uh, has made it that I, the timing of the policy is the only issue uh, why it is suspended. And uh, we are believing that as other stakeholders in the sector understand the policy very well, it will, it will be, uh, uh, they will buy into it and they, it will be easier for the government to implement. The executive director of MIM Cashew, Lars Walivik, said the continuous export of raw cashew is gradually crippling the company and if effective measures are not put in place, the company will also close down. Ivory Coast has closed its borders now. They put an export tax on raw nuts to try to grow, to protect their own industry. And uh, these are the policies that 
we feel that Ghana needs to do also. Benin has done it, other, many, many other countries have done it. Ghana is one of the only ones who hasn't done it. Kenya is one of the countries that has imposed a ban on the export of raw cashew. Patrick Wainaina is the CEO of a leading cashew processing company in Kenya, Django Organic. What is the average effect of the ban? And what will be the average effect of making sure that the farmer is getting a lot of money and everybody else does not get anything? What is the net effect in the economy if the trader gets all the money and nobody else gets every, anything? So the government will have to sit down, swallow the bitter pill, make the analysis right, and at the end of the day, I'm sure they'll do what is best for Ghana, just like what happened in Kenya. Ghana is the headquarters of the African Cashew Alliance. Members of the association are of the view that both players and policymakers in the cashew industry need to come out with a strategy that should protect the interests of all stakeholders. Other than that, jobs will be lost. Away from Cashew, Capital Bank is the latest in Ghana to enter into partnership with RIA. RIA is a money transfer company with a drive to deliver services to clients across multiple channels. Capital Bank, formerly First Capital Bank, is a wholly owned Ghanaian company licensed to operate as a universal bank in July 2012. Since then, the bank has been poised to become the bank of excellence for African markets by providing the benchmark for stakeholder returns. As part of putting the needs of the customer first before anything else, Capital Bank has introduced onto the Ghanaian market various products such as its speed banking and VMAN value for you. The novelty on board is the RIA money transfer. This money transfer comes as a result of a partnership between Capital Bank and RIA Africa, the third largest money transfer operator in the world with more than 149 operations in the world and with about 35 in Africa. Also, the partnership has the unique ability to directly credit clients' accounts with their remittances, which are a key source of foreign exchange for the country. The managing director of the Capital Bank, the managing director of Capital Bank, Reverend Fritz Gerald Odonko, describes the partnership as a win-win situation. Also, the partnership has the unique ability to directly credit clients' accounts with their remittances, which are a key source of foreign exchange for the country. The managing director of Capital Bank, Reverend Fritz Gerald Odonko, describes the partnership as a win-win situation. Well, the partnership between Capital Bank and Real Money Transfer is part of the strategic plan of um, Capital Bank to give more value to its clients. And uh, in this case, it's by offering them the ability to receive remittances uh, through the RIA money transfer system. The managing director of RIA Africa, Mr. Malik Sek, assured both existing and potential customers that there are enough filters within the RIA system to check money laundering. We have a system that tracks online suspicious transactions. So if you guys as sending or structuring the transaction, those transactions will be on hold, for instance, and we will release it only after investigation. So we have many filters in our system that prevent frauds and, and money laundering. So this is you know, extremely important for us. Ms. Francisca Salama to Yakubu from Tamale was the first RIA client to sign on to the RIA platform and she was rewarded with 1,000 Ghana cities. At this point, we go back to the interbank market and get updates on how the local currency is performing. We also bring you latest price of gold, cocoa and oil on the international commodities market.
Let's do insurance news brought to you by SIC Live. Now, the managing director of Capital Bank, Reverend Fitz General Odonko, says Capital Bank sees a huge potential in the insurance industry and believes that his outfit will soon come out with life insurance policies to serve the public. Bank. Um, and um, we do have plans to collaborate with insurance companies to offer um, bank assurance and other insurance products. We think that there's a great um, potential for the insurance uh, market in Ghana and uh, especially life insurance uh, has got great uh, uh, future and so uh, we are positioning ourselves to take advantage of uh, this opportunity. And that was insurance news brought to you by SIC Live. News that continues right after this break. Stay with us. This is the health segment of the news brought to you by kindness of FBAC. FBAC blows your pain away. My name is Michelin Taka. The use of adulterated agrochemicals by farmers in Ghana is on the increase according to the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. The Ministry is more concerned about the fact that there are no effective regulations or controls in the value chain and this poses a great danger to human health and the environment. At a symposium in Accra, key stakeholders deliberated on the causes, effects and how best to deal with the problem. The use of agrochemicals forms an integral part of the current agricultural system in Ghana. The chemicals help to increase yields and to check pests. However, the use of these chemicals have become hazardous and injurious to human health and the environment due to lack of proper education on its use, improper storage and packaging system, improper diagnosis and the factor of recalcitrant chemical dealers. Some agricultural goods such as fruits and vegetables tested positive to DDT and other poisonous chemical in a recent test done by food research institutions including the CS IR. Some tested positive to the deadly endosulfin. At a policy symposium on chemical adulteration and its impact on vegetable production and marketing, a senior research scientist at CSIR, Dr. Grace Bofriaku, said the onus does not lie on farmers alone, but everyone in the value chain. Most of the time, it looks like we're only looking in the direction of the farmer. We don't even look across the value chain. Each one of us here has a role to play. Let's look at the input dealers. Most do not know the difference between trade names and common names. So if they are ignorant, they don't know what is a trade name and what's a common name, how are they able to educate their farmers or their customers? The symposium sought not only to engage key stakeholders, but also influence policies geared towards good agricultural practices and the enforcement of regulations. The Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture in charge of crops, Dr. Alhassan Yakubu, said the use of agrochemicals in the production of vegetables is important but can be counterproductive if unregulated. Lack of effective regulation on the use of agrochemicals can render Ghana's agricultural community commodities uncompetitive on the international market, thereby denying the nation a lot of foreign exchange. Nine-year-old Joshua Zawanu has been diagnosed with a complex hole in heart condition known as Tetralogy of Fallot. He urgently needs to undergo a surgery at a cost of 28,000 Ghana CDs. Little Joshua is therefore appealing to the public for assistance to enable him undergo the medical procedure. Narrating her plight, Joshua's mother, Helen Goka, a trader and a mother of three, said her nine-year-old son has been suffering from the hole in heart condition since childbirth. According to her, Joshua has undergone a first surgery, but his condition keeps worsening. Joshua's education has been terminated due to his ill health and he cannot mingle with his friends because he easily gets tired. 
Doctors say in order for Joshua to survive, he needs to undergo a second surgery, which involves a total cost of 28,000 Ghana cities. <laughs> Muslims for so Mr. Oma Omo Mobo Omo Akrano so Mobo no Omo Mame Adoye no more Fensha Akrana Mame. Donations could be sent to the following account details Agricultural Development Bank, account name Joshua Zawonu, account number 116202011732. Alternatively, a donor can also call 0573-849-051. That's all on the segment. It was brought to you by Kindness of FPAC. FPAC, it blows your pain away. Time now for some international news. Now, more than 30 people are believed to have been killed and dozens injured in attacks at Brussels International Airport and a city metro station twin blast hit the airport at about 7 GMT, with 11 people reported killed. Another explosion struck Melbeek Metro Station near EE headquarters an hour later, leaving about 20 people dead. Brussels police have issued a wanted notice for a man seen pushing a luggage trolley through the airport. He was pictured in CCTV footage with two other suspects who are believed to have died in the blast. The Islamic State group said it's behind the attacks in a statement issued on the IS-linked AMAC agency. Belgium has raised its terrorism alerts to its highest level. Three days of national mourning have been declared. Western Europe is on high alert after attack has launched a twin assault in Belgium's capital Brussels with bombs ripping through the airport and the underground metro line. More than 30 people were killed and hundreds wounded in many critical condition. Belgium's federal prosecutor told state media one of the explosions at the airport was probably a suicide attack. He indicated that the police were going door to door throughout Brussels searching for suspects or others planning attacks. The interior minister said 600 additional police have been deployed. Coming up is sports. Good evening, let's talk sports. I'm Theophilus Sampa. We are being backed by a Japanese tornado bitters and Lunat. For the first time in the history of Ghana football, all 16 Premier League clubs have been insured. The move initiated by the Professional Footballers Association of Ghana, PFAG, is to ensure that players in the domestic top flight get the needed indemnity. The launch of the Life After Football Fund and insurance for all Ghanaian footballers, both active and retired, attracted all who matter in football in the country. The initiators, the Professional Footballers Association of Ghana, PFAG, an accredited body by FIFPRO, the worldwide representative of all professional players and a member of the Africa Division. The PFAG currently has a membership of more than 800 since its inception in 2008. Led by its General Secretary Tony Bafo, the PFAG has intervened in 31 high-profile disputes between clubs and players. Notable among them are the disputes between Steven Apia and Prince Tego and their respective clubs at the time. 
the PFAG has for the first time launched what connoisseurs call an important step in Ghanaian football history, a life after football fund and an insurance scheme for all Premier League clubs and players. The cost is being borne by the PFAG. Officials explain to all the captains and their deputies in the Premier League and the current Black Stars players on the benefits they stand to gain from the initiative. The POB chairman, Mr. Ashford Toku, the GFA president, Mr. Kwesinyantichi, the minister for youth and sport, Neil Ante Van der Poy, officials from the SIC and Fidelity Securities all urged the players to embrace the scheme. The occasion was used to present blacks to some outstanding individuals including the former head of the National Sports Authority, Mr. Walanyu Agra. The PFAG says they will extend the initiative to the second and third tier leagues and add the women's league to it. Let's move to the world of tennis now, where world number one Nova Djokovic is the winner of the 2016 BNP Baribas Open final. The Serb secured a 27th Masters title after beating Canadian Milos Ronik 6 2 6 0 in California. In India, Wills Tennis Tournament Chief Raymond Moore has resigned after his controversial comments about equal pay. Moore said women's game rides on the coat tail of men and that the male stars had carried on the sport. Men's world number one Novak Djokovic then claimed the store should fight for more money. Tennis legend Martina Maritilova said Moro's comments were extremely prejudiced, adding that female players may boycott in their worlds if more stayed. The South American a former player later apologized for his erroneous remarks. That's all for sports. Welcome back. You're still watching News Hour on GBC 24 in Showbiz. Eto is a local Ghanaian food made from either yam, plantain, or cocoa yam boiled and mashed and then mixed with palm oil. This dish is usually garnished with garnets and eggs. Although Eto is eaten on festive occasions, this dish has increasingly been incorporated into daily cuisine. One such food or meal derived from ripe plantain is at all. The plantain is mashed and then mixed with palm oil. In the northern part of Ghana, one of the main staple foods is yam. Bireto, as it is locally called, is made of mashed yam and palm oil with boiled eggs. Africa. Gari foto is also another form of a tot dish. It is often made with gari and stew, usually garnished with eggs and vegetables. The land is fine. Some potatoes and kokoyama are also used in the preparation of this Ghanaian diet and cuisine. Interestingly, Eto is gradually finding its way on the menu served on airplanes, an indication of how popular the meal has become. Africa. The Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Mrs. Elizabeth Tofoswejari, has paid a visit to commensurate with the family of the late comedian Bishop Bobo Kala as his residence at Amasaman in Accra. Well, up next is the weather report. 
Good evening, viewers. The Wink Weather Report brought to you by RMG. I am Eunice Kweku Tony. 24 hours ago, Ghana enjoyed relatively cool conditions as a result of scattered showering activities that were experienced over the southern sector. The areas that were affected are being schooled right now at the base of your screens. From now till tomorrow morning, in terms of humidity, we're going to be experiencing normal humidity across the entire country with a chance of isolated thunderstorms affecting areas over the transition the forest and the hilly areas as well as the coastal line. Northern Ghana on the other hand is going to be experiencing a fair weather condition. In terms of temperatures we are likely to experience a range between 23 and 28 degrees Celsius affecting most parts of the country. In the afternoon partly cloudy conditions with sunshine intervals will be experienced across the entire country and this time around temperatures will range between 32 and 39 degrees Celsius affecting the entire country. We are still likely to also experience a chance of scattered showers over the coastal strip of the country. The 48-hour forecast is coming up shortly. Do stay tuned to GTV. Thank you for joining me. Do enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup. For Wrapping up this bulletin of news, we look at the main stories again. And World Water Day has been celebrated to raise awareness on how clean water can change the lives of people and even transform entire societies and economies. According to almost half the world's working population, work in water-related sectors and nearly all jobs depend on water. The African Cashew Alliance, ACA, an international business organization that promotes global competitiveness of the African cashew industry, is advocating for effective policies to promote the growth of the cashew industry, especially processed cashew in Accra on Tuesday. The acting president of the alliance, Edgar Majogo, said without government support and enabling policies, the objective of adding value to raw cashew nuts through processing cannot be achieved. And on the international front, more than 30 people are believed to have been killed and dozens injured in attacks at Brussels International Airport and a city metro station to blast hit Zaventem Airport with 11 people reported killed. Thank you for watching News R. News tonight is at 10.30. Make a date with us. Thank you for watching. Good evening.